Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. In 1956, Egypt nationalized the Suez Canal. Britain and France devised a plan to regain the control over it by a military invasion. France's then ally Israel was also included in the operation. Although this coalition was successful militarily, in political sense it was a disaster for Britain and France which came under heavy pressure by the USA and USSR and they eventually retreated from Suez. This conflict, known as the Suez Crisis, or also the Second Arab-Israeli War, saw very intensive use of military aviation, and especially jets such as MiG-15 and Mystair. Egyptian pilots claimed seven kills over the coalition aircraft, but almost all of them are disputed by the other side. Other Arab nations were not directly involved in the fighting, but one incident over another Arab country still occurred. It can be seen as loosely related to the ongoing war for Suez, and Arab pilots achieved a kill which is not disputed at all. Already before the war, in October 1956, British reconnaissance aircraft began overflying Syria as rumors about the arrival of a large number of MiGs to the country caused concern. Syrian Air Force was established in 1946, and 10 years later, it relied mostly on British aircraft types. In 1950, an order was placed for a dozen Chipmunk trainers, 10 Spitfire Mark 22s and 12 Meteor Mark 8s plus 2 Meteor trainers. British government initially refused to deliver the Meteors, but the block was lifted by late 1952. When the Suez War began, Syrians had no Soviet fighters in their inventory yet, but some of Syrian pilots were in Egypt, undergoing conversion training for MiGs. Mark 8 Meteors were the only jet fighters capable of defending the country's airspace. During the Suez conflict, Egyptian pilot squadron leader Tahir Zaki was in Syria acting as an instructor to the Syrian Air Force. He and the Syrian ground controller Major Mukabri developed a plan to intercept British high-flying recon aircraft overflying Syrian airspace. Syria had no early warning radars, so they relied on observers and local police stations. Although this was a rather slow system, Mukabri realized that British planes often followed the same route and that he could estimate their track and approximate speed from the sequence of telephone calls. Several intercepts were attempted without success, but on 6 November 1956, sometime after 8 am, a Syrian border post on the Euphrates River reported an aircraft approaching from Iraqi airspace. The Syrian pilot who was launched to intercept the intruder was a young lieutenant, Hafez al-Assad. If his name sounds familiar, you are right. He would become the president of Syria in 1971, and in 2000, he was succeeded by his son Bashar, who is still the president of Syria as this video is produced. Assad was able to approach the British Canberra close enough to open fire, but the recon plane managed to escape towards Cyprus. Despite this incident, the British headquarters ordered another flight over Syria as the previous one failed due to clouds over the target area. Flight Lieutenant Bernie Hunter took off at 12.30 and he first headed towards Lebanon at over 10,000 feet. Hunter had recently experienced an interception by an Egyptian MiG-15 but was able to escape. The Canberra entered Syrian airspace overflying Nairab Air Base near Aleppo and then headed into Iraq. At about 4 p.m., the Canberra returned to Syrian airspace once again, and six alert meteors were launched to intercept it. The pilots had been sitting in their cockpits for hours. They took off from air bases at Nairab and Al Meze. Al Assad was again one of the meteor pilots, along with Munir Al Garudi and squadron leader Al Assasa, the squadron commander. The Syrian pilots were instructed to hide in the clouds over Damascus. As the Canberra was reported to be over homes, the Meteor pilots were sent to intercept it. They initially struggled to spot the British plane but were then told to look down. Flight Lieutenant Hunter noticed that clouds were clearing over Damascus and this represented danger for his aircraft. He couldn't easily hide in case of an attack. 
He then observed the first pair of meteors which approached from port to starboard and then made a rear attack. Hunter turned into the enemy fighters and evaded them. He then attempted to climb towards the clouds in Lebanese airspace. Very soon after the first attack, crew member Sam Small spotted another pair of meteors. Hunter turned into them, but this time his right engine was hit and caught fire. As Hunter realized he was losing control over the airplane, he ordered the crew to eject. Hunter and Sam Small succeeded in ejecting, but Roy Urquhart Pullen failed to do so. The Canberra crashed just inside Syrian territory. Flight Lieutenant Hunter and Flight Lieutenant Small landed inside Lebanon, while the navigator, Flying Officer Roy Urquhart Pullen, was killed in the crash. The Syrians initially believed they had shot down two different aircraft. Once that was cleared, the kill was shared between Garudi and the Sasa. Depending on the source, the two surviving British airmen were either taken to Beirut or handed over to Syrians and taken to Damascus. In any case, after a diplomatic intervention, they were released and sent to Cyprus. Another meteor was launched to intercept an unknown intruder over Syrian airspace about 40 minutes before sunset that same day. It was flown by Hafez al-Assad. The future president tested his air brakes before takeoff and found them to be faulty. He chose to take off nevertheless. Assad failed to find the intruder, and while returning back to his airfield, he couldn't stop his aircraft after touchdown. Apart from his faulty brakes, the wind had also changed direction while he was in flight. He overshot the runway and eventually ended up in a nearby Palestine refugee camp. Assad was reprimanded and given a suspended jail sentence for taking off in a faulty aircraft. British recon missions over Syria continued, but they were escorted by Hawker hunters. The flights eventually ceased as Syria introduced MiG-17s, initially flown by Egyptians. The reconnaissance Canberra shot down on 6 November 1956 was the last RAF aircraft shot down by an enemy fighter. If you liked the video, don't forget to press the like button. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal to ensure future content. Thank you and keep watching Showtime 112.